Hey guys, T Stark here with another book review. This time I'm reviewing City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. <laughs> City of Bones is a fantasy book about this being true in the real world, and is akin to a more adult Percy Jackson book. Except this time, instead of the fantastical entities being Greek, they're a mix of common mythological creatures such as demons and vampires. The setting of City of Bones is a modern New York City. Our book begins with our main character, Clary, at the Pandemonium Club with her friend Simon. Whilst there, she sees a blue-haired boy and a black-haired girl go into a storeroom followed by two men. She follows them there and sees the boy transforming into a terrifying creature before being killed. When Simon walks in, he sees none of the people who are there and Clary pretends to have seen nothing, and they leave for home. When they return, Clary's mother, Jocelyn, gets mad at them for being late. The next day, Jocelyn tells Clary and Luke, one of Jocelyn's friends, that they are going to Luke's property in rural New York. Clary doesn't want to, and she freaks out and runs to Simon's friend's poetry concert. She sees one of the people she ran into the night before there. His name is Jace, and when she confronts him outside, she gets a phone call from her mom being attacked by something. And while trying to call her back, she breaks her phone in her distraught state. She takes what appears to be Jace's cell phones, it's not, and starts running to her apartment. When she gets there, she finds not her mom, but instead a small crawling creature intent on eating her. But when the cell phone Jace had starts to heat up, she throws it in the monster's mouth and it explodes. And Clary collapses from the demon's poison. Jace comes up there just in time to help her get out of the building. When they get out, he draws a mark called a rune on her wrist to hide her from the patrolling demons trying to capture her. I'd just like to pause a moment to mention that it's set up to show the monster killed her mother here, and if this were the case, I'd commend her for the comment of show don't tell. But it said later, quite blatantly through exposition, I might add, that she was actually kidnapped. It's not much worse this way, but I Jace takes Clary to the Institute, the place where he and the other shadow hunters they hunt demons, in New York, live. This includes the Lightwoods, Jace, and Hodge, the men are of the Institute who is banished from his home country. Clary wakes up in the infirmary, the clinic there, to Isabel, one of the people at the pandemonium, telling her to drink some medicine, and Clary is healed. After some exposition, Clary calls Luke and tells her to never talk to him again. Clary, confused, needs some time alone, so Hodge, seeing this, makes everybody leave and lets her cry it out. Afterwards, she'd like to go home, so she asks, and she and Jace get on their merry way. When they get there, they go all the way up to her room with everything seeming normal, but when she gets to her room, Clary finds the door difficult to open, and when she does get it open, a forsaken jumps out. This huge, lumbering beast goes after Jace, who attacked first, and a fast-paced battle takes place. In the end, he killed it, but not without some wounds. After some runes help with that healing, the neighbor downstairs, Madame Dorothy, invites them to come in for a while. Dorothy is a witch, mostly thought to be shams in this modern world, but it turns out Madame knows a few things about magic and some things of the downworld, an alternative dimension with mythical beings. She knew Jocelyn, and Jocelyn knew her. Jocelyn would occasionally do favors for Dorothy, such as painting her Tarek deck. It tells people's futures. Dorothy has a portal that Jocelyn would have used to escape in the worst case scenario. And Clary, since she wants to know what her mom would have done, she jumps in. She wakes up near Luke's house with Jace nearby and decides to see if he's home, but only after a while of contemplation. When they get to his house, they decide to jump the fence, and Jace lands on Simon, who'd been hiding in Luke's shrubbery. There's no time to explain. Simon says he'd seen Luke harboring medieval weapons and talking to some shady people, so they did the rational thing and break into his house, clearly. Whilst in his house, Luke returns with the shady friends, talking about how Valentine, the big bad in this story, has kidnapped Jocelyn to find the cup, the magical artifact that, when drank from, turns the human into a shadow hunter, with limited success, as some can't take it. They leave and Clary found a bag of her stuff she'd left there for when she would stay over. Then the three of them head back to the Institute. At some point after they get back to the Institute, they decide that Clary has a block in her mind, so they take her to the Silent Brothers, really strong magicians who can poke through minds, but they can't lift it, though they do find the name Magnus Bane. It turns out they have a invitation for his party. When the time has come, they go to his place and question him. He says he's been reapplying the block every two years to stop Clary from seeing mythical beings and that this was the doing of her mother. Well, that and Simon gets turned into a rat for a few hours. Although I did enjoy this book, I feel everything in this world is mentioned for the convenience of the plot. For example, they mention at some point that vampires in the story ride motorcycles, and that some of these motorcycles can fly. Later in the story, Clary and Jace find themselves on a roof of a building, and use one of the motorcycles that just so happened to be there to escape. This is the only time this happens. In fact, it feels like this is happening constantly during the story. It makes the world not feel cohesive. Instead of building a world around your story, you should build a story around your world. In short, use better lore building. After after a few more scenes of fleshing out characters, Clary realizes that the mortal cup is hidden within Madame Dorothy's tarot deck due to the runes holding it into the paper. Immediately, they gather everyone together in order to evaluate their plan of action. They decide to go immediately to Madame Dorothy's, but they need a ride, so Clary calls up Simon and gets him to drive his van to the Institute. Whenever they get there, Dorothy is confused, but ultimately she hands over the deck. Clary draws some runes on the card and pulls the cup out of it. Madame tells them to hand it over, and when they say no, she opens up the portal covered by a blanket and becomes possessed by a demon. Her body is deformed, and she attacks them. Jace 
Jason and Alec get torn up before Simon comes in, and shoots an arrow at the dirty skylight in order to shed some light, and sends the demon back to where he came from. When they get back to the Institute, they try to heal Alec, who is about to die, but they can only keep him alive until they either get the Silent Brothers or Magnus to heal him. In the meantime, Hodge says to Jace that it's a bummer that you didn't get the cup, but Clary reveals that she had gotten it and hands it to Hodge. Jace gets knocked out and Valentine comes out of the portal that was formed. Hodge sells the cup for his freedom and leaves Clary behind an invisible wall so that Valentine couldn't see him during this encounter. Clary follows Hodge into an alley where he attacks her, but a wolf jumps out out of nowhere and attacks him and drags Clary to his hideout. The wolf turned out to be Luke, who was a shadow hunter who became a werewolf and is friends with Jocelyn. They find out where Valentine is hiding and track him down there. In a final encounter, Clary and Luke and his band of werewolves team up to attack Valentine's hideout and when Clary reaches the top, she realizes that Valentine was Jace's father and that Clary is his daughter. This doesn't change Clary's opinion of him. In a final attack between Luke, Clary, Valentine, and Jace, lives are almost ended constantly and power shifts all the time. But in the end, Valentine jumps into a portal to Jace's old home and Jace decides not to follow. The whole time, Valentine was cut out to be a normal big bad villain like many others, but he is actually a lot like a normal person who is slightly off. He manipulated his way into power and is neither good or bad, but leans slightly towards the bad side. It shows morality is more gray than black and white. I believe the author's purpose is to tell an interesting story, twisting classic horror story characters to form a more modern one. Overall, I enjoyed this book, but there are some flaws that exist. All in all, though, I would recommend it. This is D Stark, signing off until next time. Bye bye